chain. So we were looking at uh, the pain principle that helps us uh, an understanding of that. You know, maybe it, it just changes our whole outlook, um, the way we see other people, like, and uh, we're able to understand uh, them better and understand ourselves, actually. Um, so we we know that okay, this is why I am doing this, and therefore I need to you know, change. I need to change. I need to make some arrangements. I need to get healed. Uh, I need to address certain things. You know, put to death certain things, and I need to do that. Right? Um, okay. Let me just share the notes again. Is it coming up? No. Okay. Right. And so, um, well, we, uh, I mean, this is very important uh, to address it and to deal with it is very important um, because, uh, you know, 3 John 2 um, very clearly, you know. Um, John was praying, uh, he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper and be in health, you know, prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers, right? Your emotions and everything, um, it's tied, you know, our soul prospering is tied to everything else because if there is pain and then our mind is clouded with pain, uh, we are, you know, we are. Our mind is filled with pain. It's that's that is what is what we are sensing, um, and it and it's a, it's a it's a good thing in one way. You know, pain is um, you know to be able to experience pain you know, is good because it shows that something is wrong. Okay, it shows that uh, hey, there's a problem somewhere. Uh, if we were not being, uh, if we we're not feeling pain, then we would just go on. Without even addressing, right? So to feel pain is uh, it, it means that you know, pain and pleasure. Not to feel that it it means that okay, something is something is good, something is wrong, and uh, and so you know it's a good it's a, it's it it shows us uh, that okay, our senses are in fact working. Okay, but we need to go beyond that and address the source of that pain. Right. So, uh, if you're carrying unresolved pain, then it it clouds our objectivity. Right? We're not able to look at things objectively. Uh, we need to see past that pain. You know, we need to uh, go beyond that. Otherwise, we'll make very biased, partial. Uh, we'll come to biased and partial conclusions. Right. Uh, maybe about people. Like for example, like maybe you were hurt by a certain kind of people with a certain you know person or personality. Right, whatever. So if it, it is not resolved, you know, one example of you know that affecting our present would be, you know, you see anyone with that name, with that kind of personality, and uh, you're not able to get close to that person. Or uh, you know, just a hypothetical example. You know, it may may not happen, but I'm just saying that you know it it could interfere with the way you relate to that person because. That person reminds you so much. The very name reminds you. The very you know some of their personality that reminds you of that person, and that's that person you've not not yet forgiven or you know forgotten what that what they've done said. So it's affecting the present, right? So uh, a lot of it, us thriving and us walking in good success. Um, is connected to the prosperity of our soul or well-being of our soul. Okay, so uh, emotional health, inner wholeness, very important. Right? Um, Psalm one forty-seven and verse three is a beautiful part that He heals the broken-hearted and binds up their wounds. The broken-hearted, okay, beyond the physical, He heals the broken-hearted, referring to the Lord. Our God, 
and Salama's testimony is that he does heal the brokenhearted and heals of their own. So the God is someone, when you say God is a healer, yes, he heals our our brokenness and binds up our wounds. Right. So um, so here are some practical things. Like right? we we get healed, you know, how so are some practical things not to open up those wounds, right? Uh, or not, not to be constantly be wounded. Okay. One thing is um like especially when it comes to uh, ministry, you know, we're always dealing with people, right? Uh, and um, and there's, you know, day in and day out you're with people, interacting with people. Uh, and so there is every possibility that uh, that there is, you know, the possibility of getting hurt. You know, it, it's right there. So, um so here are some things to keep in mind, right? Some practical things, not to take, you know, when you when people remark, make remarks about you, maybe about certain things about you, maybe about the way you do. Don't take it personally. Okay. So when we take it personally, in the sense, maybe they say about something about maybe about the ministry, about the way things are done. Don't don't take it personally. And say, oh. It, you know, it's because of me they're saying this, or if this is because of you know what I share, they're saying this. Don't come to that conclusion. Okay. Um, at the same time, you know, in whatever they are saying, you know, whoever's saying it, if there is a grain of truth, if there is a small percentage of truth to what what is being said, okay, um, then look at it. Excuse me. Then look at it. Address it, consider it. If there's a, you know, if you see that, okay, there's a grain of truth, and but that objectivity will come only when we look beyond how people say it. Right? Many times we are focusing on, oh, I wish they'd said it a little differently. It came with so much noise and, and the kind of words, the language that was used. Wow, you know, we are focusing on how it was said, and so we we get sidetracked. We miss out on what was said. Right? So, if if there's some truth to it, if there's a grain of truth, if there's a small percentage of truth, and that objectivity comes when we look beyond the person, when we look beyond how they said it, it's it's difficult, right? It's difficult. We are emotional beings, and when people get emotional and say some some things, and our emotions are stirred up as well, right? So, so that comes with a walk with the Lord, right? Going beyond um, our uh, our own, you know, emotional self, and, and looking at it objectively. Okay, yeah, I'm getting angry about this, but then you know, is there some truth to what they're saying? Right, I'm getting upset with the way they, you know, uh, said it, but is there some some amount of truth to what they're saying? Okay, let's consider it, right? And and we, if we, if we would make that a practice, right? if we would make that part of our life. Okay, they've said it fine now, but I'm going to think, I'm going to look at what they've said. Okay, then um, then we will be able to address it. Okay. Then the other thing is uh, when they, when others come and say things or do, do uh, saying things and interact in a different way, you know, don't add to their hurt. You know, understand that they are hurting and they are you know, hurting, trying to hurt us. Or are hurting us um don't add to that hurt okay um, in the sense they're hurt um and how do we add to that hurt if we would insult if we would say things that we would regret later you know as a leader you know maybe as a pastor as a team leader you know we we get personal as well and we say the things you know you know what ever since the day you you know, I, we met, this has been your major problem. You know, we, we say things. I wish you had never stepped in here. Or, you know, we, we say things which we uh, we would regret, regret later. You know, emotionally when we, are, when we are calm, then we realize, why did I say that? And then we apologize and, you know, it takes a while for things to come back to normal, come back to zero again, and we have to start from scratch, right? So, um, don't add to that hurt. Just 
remove yourself from that scene if if possible right uh, and and think on it take it to the lord and that's why that old you know that old uh, hymn old song what a friend we have in jesus you know, so much of truth in it i right? take it to the lord in prayer Do your friends despise take it to the lord in prayer take it to the lord in prayer and there's so much that happens when we take it to the lord in prayer because we are unburdening we are sharing we are giving it to giving the whole thing to him and there's a great transaction that happens there's a great exchange that happens because he hears he understands because he himself went through right and uh, as a as a high priest he was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin so he understands that and uh, and he also gives us the revelation and just the fact that god understands just the fact that he hears now sometimes all we need is a hearing right so all we need is uh, that yes lord i thank you that you understand this that you at least understand right um, you're the one person who understands so that is all we need that is all we need for our heart to be healed that is all we need for you know, strength to come into our lives so um so don't add to their hurt but if you are able to direct them right direct the other person who's hurting to get help that will be great if we can do that right okay so so the, so we look, we're looking at the pain principle okay so let's stop here and uh, maybe if you have any questions or i mean uh, you know uh, the feasibility of these things uh, maybe in your own lives you have some experiences and uh, we, you know any questions you can just we can talk about that anything at all no none whatsoever okay so okay so uh, what do you think in your estimate um of these principles you know do you have uh, any experience of putting these things in practice in your own life maybe you know without even thinking about this as a principle you know maybe we've we've done that right we walked in it um the lens the mirror the, the pain um and uh, yeah if there's any experience that you've had you can just talk about that as well or, or even uh, you know something that did not work you knew that okay this is this is what will help but it didn't really work work out well um and we can talk about that also right anything of that sort okay okay so um you know you you so you think about it you know um and let it not just remain a theory right uh, all these principles are uh, a very practical ones things that we can actually put to practice or apply uh, in our you know in our relating to people right in our preparation to relate to people so um, we can actually apply it uh, confidently apply it in our lives right okay the fourth one is what we call as or what john c maxwell calls as the hammer principle okay so what is that so in our preparing to relate to people uh you know the thing is not never to use a hammer to swat or hit a fly a small insect of someone's head okay so which which means you know which again is something related to what we addressed in the pain principle that you your response to someone or your response to a problem or reaction to a problem is to be is is to be in proportion to the objective nature of the problem right if you're using a hammer to hit a fly of someone's head which means that is not the appropriate thing that is required there right you can probably use a fly swatter or use a you know roll up a newspaper or you know that would be appropriate where it doesn't hit the person where it doesn't injure the person you know in our wanting to solve the problem right we are actually creating more damage 
to the person than solving the problem. Okay, maybe the solve problem will get solved, right? Maybe that that insect will just die, right? Because you hit the hammer on it. But you look at the other problem. Yeah, you look at the capital, uh, you know, destruction that has been brought in, right? So the person is also injured, and even more so, he's worse off. He or she is worse off than how he, he was earlier. Okay, so uh, so this overreaction to something which is there uh, is uh, is a problem, and it's going to hurt the person. Right. So what will help us what will help us actually have a correct perspective or what you know how do i relate to this or how do i solve this problem or how do i approach it okay few things we can look at one is the total picture okay so when somebody's sharing their problem when somebody is presenting their point of view before reacting to it take some time before reacting or responding, listen fully. Okay. Um, maybe you know we we jump to certain conclusions. Oh, this is how it is. Okay. I, oh, I know that problem. You know, the moment the person starts to talk or describe the issue, say, okay, yeah, yeah, I know it. I know it already. This is what it is. It happened two years back. This is what it is, and for this is the solution. And this is what you do. You just jump in. So, listen fully. You know. Um, and completely, maybe we can ask questions, and we see that hey, this is not the same as something else that happened two years back. This is different, and again, because of you asking those questions, um, we get better clarity. We get the full picture, the total picture, right? And then we respond. So when we when we take time to understand the total picture, then our response to that problem will be appropriate okay whereas if you do not take time to understand or if you do not ask questions to understand the total picture then our response could be skewed you know our response could be uh, uh, not proportional to the problem okay. the the second one is the timing you know act in a timely manner okay timely manner means that you don't delay postpone uh, but timely manner also means the appropriate time. Okay, uh, maybe at that moment to address that issue may not be appropriate. Right? In our wanting to do things in a punctual manner, you know, there is a there is a time and a place. Right? Maybe at that time it would not help. It's it it depends, right? It's a it's not a one size fit all kind of a thing, right? We need to because people are different because the problems are different. There's so many factors, right? So understand, use our discernment. Let's understand, use our discernment. Okay, is this something that I need to do right now, or or in the sense address right now? Or can I talk about it later? Or the other thing is also, you know, will this can this wait, or should it be addressed right away? You know, if I wait, then it's it's not it's not the correct thing. It's it's not going to help. So let me just address it right here, right now. This is the this is the only way to do it, right? So um, so the timeliness of it is important. Okay. So we're looking at four T's here. You know, the, the third one is the tone of it. Okay. The tone of our voice. Right. Um, Proverbs fifteen and Verse one. Let's look at that verse. It, it talks about how a soft answer uh, turns away wrath. Okay, so um, a soft answer turns away wrath, but the harsh words turns up anger. Uh, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools forth pours forth foolishness. Okay, so, so a soft, soft answer turns away wrath. So what is he talking about? He's talking about the tone of your voice and the words that are used. Excuse me. It says a harsh word stirs up anger. So, uh, well, nature of the word and also the tone that is used. Right. So, 
if we are polite if our tone is calm and if our if we're not uh, if we are not you know in terms of volume as in the level of our voice and also if we are not you know screaming out normally you know you realize that when it comes to certain um, you know uh, certain things when we are agitated we use a higher tone our tone goes up 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 right hey what is wrong you know, there's a, there's a, our tone has gone up right it's become sharper we are able to you know it's cutting through but if we are calm we're using a you know we're just talking like i'm talking right now maybe uh our tone is different our tone is low right so um what tone are we addressing you know, be mindful of that maybe we are just used to talking agitatedly and you know in a in a sharp tone all the time right uh, and so it helps for us to prepare and say okay i should not raise my voice and you say you know raise my voice um why do you raise your voice it it it, it, it involves this right it's in, in it it refers to the loudness or the softness but it also refers to the sharpness or you know the tone in other words the tone of voice both right so it helps okay so in the hammer principle if our tone is not really appropriate and maybe even the, the volume of our voice is not really appropriate maybe it's it doesn't require it doesn't it is not something that is very urgent something was done and then it doesn't require the tone of voice it doesn't require that volume of uh, volume level of that particular thing right of that voice it rec doesn't require that so the hammer principle is this that hey if it's appropriate i don't have to shout and scream or i don't have to i can lower my voice and address it okay then the temperature temperature meaning if our reaction you know if our reaction to our facial reaction our our uh, our body movement and everything uh, you know things that we do is um if 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 the reaction is like agitated and you know we're just pounding on the table and if you are you know maybe our whole body you know just like why did you do that why or you know if we are agitated and if we are doing all that that also is that the hammer are we using a hammer right in doing this am i using a hammer to hit the fly right so this all expresses the hammer right so we can like the timing the tone and the temperature especially you know express the hammer so we can have a softer we can have a softer touch you don't have to use a hammer to crush the head you don't know, right you can use a softer touch so here's some things that we can do right let the past stay in the past just think about it you know maybe the past uh, problem or the pa past um, whatever this person did in the past maybe that is also adding to it like like we said it's snowballing and is becoming bigger and uh, and so we need to be objective you know and see okay i know this person did this some three times and this is the fourth time right and it's it's a different issue altogether so we look at it objectively you know is does that need to be addressed here okay even if, if that needs to be addressed okay like for as for example if we, if we feel that okay it's because of the same same pattern you know the same way in which same manner in which this was done it was of oh, that outlook of this person which created the problem let me address it in a different way okay because if i'm going to cumulatively add on that and bring it to bear upon this particular issue it's going to create you know it's going to be a it's going to be a big mess right so let the past stay in the past um and then to honestly ask ourselves is my reaction part of the problem is my reaction to this whole thing is it part of the problem right can i uh how how i how, how i've reacted I, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to know the difference between reaction and response right react respond react is very reflexive uh, response is when you've taken time right, to think think through right uh, um, response requires some time reaction is immediate 
it's a reflex most most time it's a reflex or a knee jerk kind of a reaction you know we said this and then you reacted in this manner that person did this and i reacted right um, it can be immediate it can be uh, you know a little later as well but then it's most times immediate so it's good to know the difference between reaction and response right so ask this question you know is my reaction did it add to the problem did it create the problem is it part of the problem okay uh, we need to understand that actions are remembered actions are remembered words may be forgotten in time right but actions are remembered people remember that so in our uh, in our interaction in our response right how am i responding right? what words am i using right uh, and in what way am i even responding to it you know how am i acting how am i reacting okay. because that will be remembered okay and the, and the last thing is this uh, never let the situation mean more than the relationship okay now um well some of our you know if if you're thinking of relationships you know some of the relationships are formal right it is formal uh it is uh, some relationships are form informal it, they are close and uh, it it depends you know it could be family um but we're talking about you know in leadership situations we're talking about relationships that are maybe formal maybe uh, you know even if it's uh, uh, informal it, it's in a ministry setting they, they should be they they need there could be some kind of formal uh, structure to it right so never let the situation mean more than the relationship okay at the end of it the you know the our reaction to that situation uh, is it hindering the relationship will the relationship actually be there uh, and so just think about that right? do you want that to continue will it be there and uh, you know all these things would actually help us uh, to have a, a appropriate response right so you know so we're talking about a, a scenario where we, we we might actually respond in a way or react in a way which is far far worse than it actually requires okay so asking this especially this last thing you know what about the relationship so if you think about that then we then we realize that, okay it actually does not require this kind of a response i can actually temper down tone down the way in which i'm responding okay so that's the pain principle um uh if like a few more things treat loved ones with unconditional love admit wrongs and ask forgiveness you know to be honest to be truthful and uh, you know if there is uh, something wrong on our part we don't have to be defensive we don't have to defend that wrong right if it is wrong it is wrong so ask forgiveness for that wrong not for the entire thing right uh, maybe there are 10 things that you did right and you did when you spoke um, the right thing you did the right thing so you don't have to apologize for that right many times we when we apologize so all that we did is wrong uh, in in that you know situation no uh, we can admit whatever things that we uh, did wrong and ask for forgiveness okay, and say okay yes i should not have said that i should not have you know uh, respond with that manner about this and i'm sorry about that Now, this one thing yes this was a mistake on my part I'm sorry about that okay and also treat with uh, unconditional love okay okay then one more the last one here for how to prepare ourselves to relate to others okay doing some kind of ground work is the elevator principle which means that um, we edify we lift up people okay Uh, elevator elevate lift up people okay. um so in psalm 3 and verse 3 the psalmist says um let me just read out that verse okay. but you o lord 
No, maybe you should just read the first two verses also. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are those who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. Verse 3, but you, O Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. He says, Lord, you are the lifter of my head. I, and I, and I'm just bowed down. And I just put my face to the ground, and I'm you know, everything has just brought me low. Lord, you are the one. You're my. You're a shield for me. You're the glory and the lifter of my head. Right. So we imitate God. Be the one who lifts up people, which means encouragement with truth and authentic love. No superficiality or pretense. This will lift the person up. Okay. So let's be people who do not put people down, but lift them up. Proverbs 3.27 says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it's in the power of your hand to do so. Okay, so Barnabas, Barnabas was one such person. He uh, he lifts up. He's in fact Saul. He's called uh, a son of encouragement. Right, His name very name means son of encouragement. So, uh, And he lived out. His, his name when uh, people were afraid of Saul and you know, he was persecuting the church and so when they were still not sure uh, uh, about him but Barnabas was the one who brought him and connected him with the apostles uh, in the church in Jerusalem and, uh, and they were able to speak into his life and uh, and then from then on we see you know so Paul going back and the ministry uh, going back to Antioch and then and so on, right? The ministry and the mission trips and, and all that we see. So, um, be that kind of a person in people's lives, be that encourager, be that uh, uh, person who actually lifts people up. Okay, some people add something, some people you know, we enjoy them, some people subtract, subtract something from our lives, we tolerate them, some people multiply something, we value them. And people also divide something in our lives, right? Or bring division, we avoid them. Okay, so, uh, so these are some things that we can keep in mind when it comes to uh, you know, the elevator principle. Okay, so we looked at five things, and uh, these are things to keep in mind when we are relating to others, relating to other people. Okay, okay, so the next one is about uh, focusing on others, which is uh, to be other focus um but i guess we just stop here for today okay uh and uh, we look at this uh, from our next class i know we're just uh, stopping a little early but um, that's fine so we look at um, you know this is the second one of the five uh, sections that we are looking at in this winning with people uh, to be other focused okay so this also you know if you look at each of these these have some principles so uh, these are things for us to put in practice okay so so until next class, maybe you, know, you can just think about what we looked at, the lens, the, the mirror, the pain principle, the hammer principle, and the elevator principle, and see, okay, you know, how can I put it to practice? Or what are the consequences of applying this in my own life? And we're talking about how we can relate to people, how we can win with people, right? Okay, so we'll stop here, and uh, we'll continue in our next class. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, Patrick.